All right, so we need spray gene. Yeah. So for this, we need Hooke's Law. Okay, anybody remember Hooke's Law? Okay. Uh, how about we go to, let's go to this. So the fundamental governing thing is that the sum of the forces, right? Right, so the, the vector sum of the forces is what? Mass. Mass of the system times the acceleration, right? This is like, the only thing I know about physics, actually. <laughs> Trust me, it's enough. So you start with this. Actually, also, this is the only thing I care about in physics, because this is what governs how you fall off a rock climb. <laughs> so the vector sum of the forces is the mass times the acceleration. So I started over here with mass times acceleration, and I'm thinking spring, right? So I'm thinking I have some kind of a springy the jig with a blob on the end of it. <laughs> oh boy. Cool? Yeah. Yes? Never seen one of these before. <laughs> Never seen one of these before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a minus ky, which is, yeah, proportional to delta y, right? Yeah. Which is basically the distance you are off to zero. This is the restorative force of the spring, right? So if you've got your spring compressed in and equilibrium's here, the spring itself is pushing that way. You guys all see that? Yeah. Proportional to your so displacement. So the spring's pushing down. In, like in this case, are we, are we so if the spring's compressed, right, it's going to push towards equilibrium. If the spring's stretched out, where's it going to push? Towards equilibrium. Towards equilibrium, which will be up. Is this the is is y the length of the spring or the length? Y? So y is the distance off of equilibrium for the spring. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's the displacement of the spring. Okay. Then I also have a minus b y prime. So y prime is a velocity. Good. So this guy's going to be a. Yeah, this guy's going to be some kind of damping due to friction. With me on that? Okay. And then I'm going to throw in an F external here. Like gravity. Yeah, like gravity of the system. Okay, then we should probably spend a second thinking about signage. You guys with me? So I could kind of count on my proportionality constants to absorb screwed up signage, right? Like if I dorked up my signage, like if this was really supposed to be plus k over here, well then k would just always end up being negative. You guys with me on that? But we should probably think about it. Does that go the other way than the acceleration? Acceleration. Yeah, the acceleration yeah. should point back towards the center, right? And friction, yeah. So yeah. think about this for a second. All right, so we can rewrite this as my double prime plus, how about plus by prime plus ky equals f external. Okay, now, I would like to think of a way to solve this, because I don't actually know how to solve these. You guys with me on that? Like right now, first day, this is a new beast to me. What is this thing? Second order linear. This is a second order, right now it's linear. It's non-homogeneous. Differential equation. <laughs> nice. Okay. 
So if I wanted to solve this, you might do like the Algebra 2 style thing. Look at this and what do you think of? Yeah, you look at this and you think to yourself, that looks a lot like a polynomial of degree 2. Yeah. So you think to yourself, probably the quadratic formula will help me somehow. And then you think, and then you think the thing that Anthony is making a face at me about, which is, that's idiotic. <laughs> that clearly doesn't apply. And it doesn't clearly apply. But it turns out that if you think a little bit about this, and make the right substitution, you get to quadratic formula lamp. Can you just say why is something squared? OK, so if you say, all right, uh, let's just suppose something. Right? Like, this is my usual approach for differential equations. Guess something. Hopefully, it's not too dumb. I'm going to guess, like, y of x is Okay. Like, I could guess that y is a quadratic. Yeah. Right? Like, that's a thing I could do. It'll certainly get you something in each of those. Uh... Yeah, okay. It'll get me something kind of, maybe? I don't know. So, what's y prime then? 2ax plus b. 2ax plus b. And y double prime? 2a. Is 2a. OK, so if I take this and I go plug it in over there, right? I'll get 2am plus b times, oh, we already have oh crap. Which one do I want to change? I'm going to change this one. I'm going to put a hat on this b. OK, so I have b from the, over there times 2ax plus b half plus k k times a x squared plus b hat x plus c. And this is supposed to equal the external force sum. Yeah, probably the external force sum is a bit much for me right now. Let me just solve the homogeneous one first, right? And then we'll just do the same crap we were doing before. We'll just like hit it with variation of parameters or something. You guys good with that as a thought? OK, so if I multiply this out, um, I have a concern right now. Mike, what's my concern? I have three in like, if you multiply this out categorically, what do you have? Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. But specifically, you have something like uh, a whole lot more variables than you need. Yeah, a whole bunch more variables than you need, but something that looks like this. Yeah. Right, you have a quadratic equal zero. But you're supposed to get hard equals here, not like sometimes. Oh, we can have a plus or minus. You guys remember that? When I solve a differential equation, right, like this stuff should actually just all cancel out, and I should get 0 equals 0. I shouldn't get x is something, because that would say my solution only works at like 2 times ever. I would like it to work for all the x's on some interval, right? So. Is some quadratic equal to zero on an interval? Well, it might be, but only if these things are all zero. You guys see that? The x squared one's pretty easy to see. It's k times a. So that would mean either k or a has to be zero. Well, k is your spring constant. So either you're not playing with a spring. <laughs> In which case, it would be kind of dumb to play with springs, right? OK, so k is probably not 0. That means a is 0. Which means you don't have quadratic. That means I'm not really looking at a quadratic. And so 
this piece goes away, that piece goes away, and that piece goes away. And then I have some equation with constants, right? You guys see that? So there would be some kind of universal relationship between my constants. Could be. Right? But there's no acceleration in that case. Right? Y double prime is zero. Oh yeah, y double prime is zero solves this. The homogeneous one, right? That's just that me running into that trivial solution, just like tripping over it, basically. <laughs> right? Yeah. You guys see that? So this guess just didn't work out for me. Okay? So, one thing I could think is, in the homogeneous case, right, I'm looking at my double prime plus by prime plus ky is zero. Right? I might notice that y is identically zero solves this. Yes. You guys see that? Okay. Great. We could probably even conjure up a first order case that solved this with the appropriate constant. Oh, yeah. Cool. Alright. So, what's a better guess? All right, try this on for size. What's a thing that kicks a number every time you differentiate it? Close. E to the x is just itself every time you differentiate it. E to the ax kicks a number every time you differentiate it, right? Kicks out another a. So what if I try that as my guess? What if I try y of x is e to the rx? Right, it's just a guess. I can try whatever the hell I want. There's no guarantees it's going to work. But I can try whatever I want. And y double prime is r squared e to the rx. And then if you try to plug these in over there into my homogeneous version, I get m r squared e to the rx plus b r e to the rx plus k e to the rx is supposedly zero. It's not going to e to the rx, so cancel. Yeah, the e to the rx is all cancel, right? Just divide through by that. Why aren't I worried about dividing through by that? Yeah, the other side is zero, and it's never zero. Okay, so now I'm left with m r squared plus b r plus k is zero. Hey, there's the quadratic formula. You guys see that? Yeah. Because now I'm not solving for x's, right? I'm solving for r's. And then when I get one of those r's, I'm just going to plug it in right here. Then I'll get a solution to my homogeneous differential equation. Okay, in Springland, if there's no force function, right? There's no external force on your spring. It's called a unforced spring. Out of equilibrium? No, no, it can, it, you can start it out of equilibrium. It's just that there's no other forces. So the only forces on your spring are the spring restorative force and maybe friction. So we didn't. Like so this doesn't have a little gremlin that comes along every once in a while and whacks it with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. It's not operating in a gravitational field, right? Like there's no gravity on your spring. Or an electrical, yeah, or any <laughs> field. Mostly I like to think of, there's not some little thing messing with it. Like, these are just what it, like, the only forces are the spring itself and maybe friction. 
Cool. The little gremlin with a hammer is actually a thing we can solve. We're going to learn a way to solve those. They're really cool. Any questions on the idea of unforced springs? No? Cool. Should we do an example or two? Yeah. Yeah. 